it's not age but it is taqwa it is god consciousness it is piety it is righteousness the only way one human being can be superior to the other human being it's not by wealth it's not by age it's not by sex but it is by piety it is by god consciousness it's by righteousness unlike hinduism when we read the vedas it's mentioned that almighty god he created the brahmin class the learned class from the head that's the first caste then he created the warrior class the kshatriyas from the chest then from his stomach and thighs he created the business community the vaishyas and from the feet he created the shudras that's the untouchables that's the lower caste so this is what is mentioned in the vedas in islam we believe that all the human beings are equal we don't believe that one human being is superior to the other human being because of birth because of profession because of wealth because of color because of caste so islam is a universal religion unlike in the vedas what they say that you have to stick to your profession because it was mainly controlled by the brahmins which is again small percentage minute percentage and they say that if you are born as a shudra you remain a shudra you serve the brahmin next life maybe you may become a better person no this is all ideology so that you know they want to keep the person low person will remain low and the rich and the top people remain top in islam we believe in equality and islam is religion for all the human beings that is the reason islam is against caste system hope that answers the question sister okay sir i have one more doubt so why you are saying uh, the muslim is sayyid muslim or sunni muslim or shia so what is that sister said that why am i saying sayyid muslim and shia muslim sunni i never said sayyid muslim shia muslim is the one who submits his will to almighty god in islam there is no sect allah says in the quran in surah al imran chapter 3 verse 103 wa tasimu bi habdillahi jamia wala tafarraqu hold to the rope of allah strongly and be not divided there is no sayyid muslim and sunni or this yes the family fine you may belong to a family you may belong to sheikh family you may belong to sayyid family to know your roots that does not mean a person is superior a khan is superior to a sheikh or a sayyid no it is belonging to your roots like how you may come from some family so that you have come from particular land or particular area if you have come from kokan region so this is family background it doesn't mean one person is superior to the other the only way one human being can be superior to the other human being is by piety is by righteousness is by god consciousness hope that answers the question sister Okay, second question: Why in Islam marriages no horoscope is seen? Sister asks the question that why in Islam during marriages no horoscope is seen? Because sister, we don't believe in horoscope. So why there is no date of birth? Based on the date of birth, you are not seeing any horoscope? Yes, sister, I'll come to it. I will tell you what Hinduism says because I studied Hinduism. In Hinduism, they believe in horoscope, kundli, kundli. No kundli. Yeah, I know. I It's know. called kundli. Yes, you know, sister. When kundli, you tell your date of birth. Then they say that this sun was there, and this shagun, and this this grahan came. This is a science, but this science is not established science. It's a hypothesis. It says that if you are born on this date, then this grahan comes, and this planet goes there, and this. It is a science, but it's not an established science. It's not hard science. like what we read in our college biology physiology embryology it is what they believe it's an assumption and then they talk about future everything what they mention the kundli does not come out to be true we in islam are against fortune telling quran says in surah maida chapter number 5 verse number 90 ya alladhina amanu innam al khamru wal maisuru oh you believe most certainly in toxic and gambling wal anzab wal aslamu dedication of stones divination of arrows rishum min amali shaitan these are certain handiwork first tanibul lakum tuflihun abstain from this handiwork that may prosper quran says this fortune telling divination of arrows they are certain handiwork abstain from it that may prosper so in islam we do not believe in this many a time you go in a machine you put your date of birth then it comes out there something good is going to happen to you in the next one week even if 100 bad thing happen one good thing will surely happen the next person goes it comes horoscope 
something bad is going to happen in the next one month. So these are statements that are made which are so ambiguous. And all this, you know, parrot goes and picks up, a parrot goes and picks up a chit, and you come to know your kundali or what your future. So in Islam, we don't believe a parrot can pick up and tell you what is your future, or by reading the palm, or looking at the stars. Islam is against this. And many a time, you get fooled into believing that it is true. And there was a research done that once a psychologist, he was teaching a class, class of 100 students. And after one week, he said, now I have understood your background, everything. I will write about each individual person, about his past and everything. But don't open the chit until I tell you. So he wrote to all 100 students details about the past. Then he said, okay, now open the chits and give me gradation. How much am I accurate? Believe me. More than 95% of the students said, the professor was more than 90% correct. The secret was, the professor wrote the same thing for everyone. These are such ambiguous statements. What we have to realize, sister, Islam is against fortune telling, against knowing about the future. That's the reason there's no kundli required. If the kundli was there, yet we find that so many marriages are being broken in Hinduism. Why? What we believe that we have to choose our life partner. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad said, it's mentioned in Sahih Hadith, that whenever you choose your life partner, you look for four things. Beauty, wealth, nobility, and virtue. The best is virtue. The best to choose from a life partner is a virtuous life partner, not Kundali. Whether born in October, September, doesn't make a difference. The virtue should match. That is the reason a woman in Islam, sister, is called as a Mohsena. Mohsena in Arabic means a fortress against the devil. In other religions, including Hinduism, the woman is referred as an instrument of a devil. In Quran, the woman is referred as a Mohsena. In Arabic, it means a fortress against the devil. So if you marry a virtuous woman, inshallah, she will prevent the husband from going in the wrong track. Hope that answers the question, sister. Shall I ask the third question? Sister, let's give a chance. When the chance comes to you, you can answer. Okay, no you. problem. So you can stand there. We'll ask the other non-Muslims. We'll allow them to give a question. If any other non-Muslims come, give them a chance. Then you can ask sisters. So that we give everyone equal opportunity. Yes, brother. I have a question yes. that uh, how can you convince a Sikh about Islam based on the comparison between the Guru Granth Sahib and the Quran? Furthermore, did you encounter any contradictions in the Guru Granth Sahib when you read it, when you read it and understood it. My brother who asked two questions yesterday night is a job seeker. I think you're a truth seeker. Huh? <laughs> he asked that, can you compare, when you compare Sikhism, Guru Granth Sahib, what are the similarities you found and did you find any differences in Sikhism? I did mention some points yesterday that as far as Sikhism, I told you yesterday that it was a religion of 10 Gurus and it was founded by Guru Nanak Sahib and the 10th Guru was Guru Gobind Sahib. It originated towards the end of the 15th century in the land of Punjab, the land of Fire Rivers. And Guru Nanak was very much influenced. He belonged to a Kshatriya family and was influenced by the Muslims. Therefore, you find many of the teachings are quite common and scholars say it's an amalgamation of Islam and Hinduism. As far as the teachings are concerned, the basic Sikh comes from the root word Sisya, means a student, a seeker, a seeker of truth. Therefore, I told you, you are a seeker of truth, not a job seeker. And in Arabic, we say Talib. No, Talib. Talib means a student, person who does Talab, who seeks. As far as the five Ks a Sikh is supposed to maintain in Sikhism, he has to maintain his Kesh that uncut hair. He has to have a kanga, a comb, to keep his hair clean. He has to wear a kada, a bracelet, a metal bracelet. He has to keep a kirpan, a dagger. I don't know whether you have one. No. The Dubai police won't allow you here. Huh? <laughs> and the fifth is the kacha, the underdaws, the long underdaws. So these are the five Ks that a Sikh should maintain. If you ask me similarities, some are right. Even the Prophet said that, you know, we have to keep an arm, it's sunnah. Therefore, when you go to Oman, most of the Omani has a dagger. 
like the Sikh, Oman. You saw the Omani. So, you know, because they said Sunnah, fine. A prophet said that you be prepared always have a weapon, help you in self-defense. So it's matching. So it's not a fard, it is sunnah. In Sikhism, it's a fard. So that's the difference is there. As far as uncut hair, our religion doesn't say that you should cut or should not cut. So there are many teachings which are similar. Some are different, some are optional. As far as I told you yesterday, that regarding the basic concept of God, I feel it is almost similar. The concept of God in Sikhism, and the concept of God in Islam is almost similar. And as I told you yesterday, that the first verse of the Guru Granth Sahib, Adi Granth, that is the Japuji, first volume, first verse says that the God is true. He is the creator, the unbegotten, free from fear and want, great, compassionate. This is similar to the concept of God in Islam, of Surah class. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. This is Brother Mamdouh Muhammad from everywhere in the world. I am sending a greeting to every Muslim in the world to greet them and to congratulate them for fasting the whole month of Ramadan. Eid Mubarak. Dialogue. Dialogue. Discussion, 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 debate, 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 rebuttal, rebuttal, rebuttal conclusion, conclusion. Eliminate misconceptions about religion. Get enlightened. Witness Dr. Zakir Naik in a battle of words in Crossfire every Friday at 8.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 10 a.m. Saudi Arabia on Peace TV. Sikhism is a monotheistic religion which believes in one God. It is against Autarvada. It does not believe in idol worship. And in the unmanifest form, Almighty God is called as Ek Omkara and manifest form as Omkara. And there are various attributes, what I mentioned yesterday of the similarities. Many attributes given to Almighty God in the Guru Granth Sahib and Sikhism is the same as in Islam. Almighty God is called as Akal, that's eternal. He is called as Sahib, that's Lord. He is called as Kartar, that is Creator. He is called as Parvardigar, that's the Cherisher. He is called as Rahim, the Merciful. He is called as Kareem, the Beneficent. He is also called as Vahe Guru, the One True God. Now, what we realize as far as Sikhism is concerned, as I mentioned, it's an amalgamation, as the scholars say, of Hinduism and Islam. There are many points which are similar. What is not there, because it's a religion that came after the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. It's one of the new religions. There are very few religions that came after it. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So therefore, it does not mention about the prophecy of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. All the other religious scriptures that you find, Judaism, Christianity, Hinduism, Buddhism, they mention about the coming of the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Now, Sikhism, because it's a new religion, it came after the demise of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There's no mention that I came across about Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As far as Islam is concerned, the basic two points to be noted. After believing that there's only one God who deserves worship and obedience, besides that, you also have to believe in the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Though Guru Nanak did respect Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he did praise him, but I don't know of any scripture where he mentioned him as the messenger. So this is one point which I feel is which is then the other scriptures of the other religions. Where it's clearly mentioned, besides believing in one God, besides believing in Tawheed, about the coming of the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, which is not mentioned in the six scriptures. And the practice of Sikhism has deviated and have gone on the wrong track, as I said, that they worship the Guru Granth Sahib, the Adi Granth, which was not told by Guru Nanak. Neither worshipping the fire has been told. So what we realize that all these are interpolation that has come. And many of the acts of Hinduism have crept into Sikhism. And that's how you have a different religion. But what we say Quran is the Furqan, is the criteria to judge right from wrong. Whatever matches with the Quran we say, we have no objection accepting as the word of God. Which contradicts, we say is wrong. What does not match and does not contradict, we say maybe it's right, maybe it's wrong. 
Hope that answers the question well. Shall we have the next question from the brother's side in the middle of the aisle? Yeah. Good evening, Dr. Zakir Naik, and to one and all. My name is Srinil Patne, and uh, we have a family uh, restaurant business. Well, my question is, as we all know, God is the Almighty, the one and all. If he's, uh, sorry, he or she, I wouldn't genderize him. If God is so powerful, why doesn't he come down himself or clear all the sins in this world? Make it the perfect place to be in. Why does it have to take so much of time? Like, as we all know, there is hell and there is heaven. Uh, the people who do good deeds go to heaven and the people who do bad deeds go to hell. He's testing us. Why does it take God 6,000 years to test us? Brother, that's a very good question. That why isn't God so powerful that he can come down and clear all the misconceptions? Why is it taking 6,000 years or more to test us? It's a very good question. And Quran says that if Almighty God wanted he could have made everyone as Muslims. Quran says in many places. That means he could have made everyone believe in Almighty God. But the Quran says in Surah Mulk, chapter number 67, verse number 2, Allazi khalaqal mawata wal hayata. It's Almighty God has created death and life to test which of you is good in deeds. It's like you telling me that we have gone to school. After 10 years, we appear for board examination. SSC board, CBSC, IGCSC. Now, why is the teacher taking test? Why doesn't teacher pass everyone? If teacher passes everyone, everyone will get admission into medical college. And everyone will become doctors and they start killing people rather than curing. So in the medical examination you say, why is our medical teacher failing us? He's failing us to know whether you're worth treating a patient or not. So similarly, Almighty God has created the human beings and have given the human beings a free will. All the other creations of Almighty God don't have free will, except the human beings and jinn have free will. The angels have no free will. Whatever God says, they follow 100%. But the human being is a superior creation than the angels. After Almighty God has given us a free will, then if we obey the commandment of God, we are superior than the angels. If we don't obey his commandments, we are inferior to the angels. So now, Almighty God has given us a free will. And before we came in this world, Almighty God asked us, who would like to become a human being? If you don't become a human being, you have just passed. You may either become mountain, they are Muslim, tree, they are Muslim, animals, they are Muslims, angels, they are Muslim. Muslim means submitting the will to God. All the animals are Muslims. All the stars are Muslims. All the plants are Muslims. All the angels are Muslims. Now, human being is a unique creation. It is the best creation of Almighty God. So God asked, who would like to become a human being? The Quran says, we human beings were fools who said we want to become human beings. That means, just pass, or if you become a human being, you may get distinction. All of us thought we'll get distinction. How many get will come to afterwards? So we have been given the free will. And now we are undergoing the test. So if Almighty God passes everyone, then I will say Almighty God is unjust. If Almighty God puts everyone in heaven, then I will I was such a good man. I did not rob. I was honest. That man, robber, rapist, even he's with me in heaven. I will object to Almighty God. Why did you put this person in heaven? So Almighty God, the Quran says in Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse number 40, he is never unjust in the least degree. So therefore, Almighty God is merciful. He gives us a chance. He forgives us. But finally, he's also just. So based on this, we are undergoing this test. This life is a test for the hereafter. So we are a unique creation of Almighty God. And the purpose of this creation, as the Quran says in Surah Darya, chapter 51, verse 56, tul jinna wal insa illa li abdun. That Almighty God has created the jinn and the human beings not but to worship him. By worshiping him, that means obeying his commandments. If you obey his commandment, we pass in this test. Otherwise, the Quran says, if he wanted, he could have made all the human beings Muslims very easy for him. But we are a better creation, a unique creation. If we obey him, after free will is given, we are superior. Hope that answers the question, brother. Thank you. The next question from the brother here. 
Good evening. My name is Rahul. I work in an ad agency in Media City. I have to say, you're confrontation handle karne mein kafi seasoned. Okay. And uh, I would like to ask you questions on two topics with respect. Uh, the first is, uh, I do agree with you that uh, when you marry your direct brother, the likelihood of uh, handicapped children is very, very high. But uh, I also agree to the fact that God, man was created with one pair and then they propagated from there. But when you put the two together, it creates a little confusion. Because if you marry your sister, which obviously the first few did, we should all be some level of handicap, you know. MashaAllah. Brother asked a very good question. He tried to link the question that was asked yesterday and the question asked today. I wasn't there yesterday. <laughs> uh, anyway, the question asked yesterday was that if all humankind has been created from one pair of male and female, how did humanity come into existence? So then I said there that the rule that time was, today the rule is that marrying among close brothers and sisters is incest. But that time the rule was that you cannot marry brothers and sisters of the same delivery. Adam and Eve is the first pair of human beings, later on their children, but marrying brothers and sisters of same delivery was prohibited. But different deliveries permitted. Different, I'm sorry? Different deliveries. Deliveries. If brothers and sisters born in the same delivery, they were not permitted to marry. But different deliveries, they were permitted. And later on, the rule came that marrying brother and sister were the same delivery or different delivery is prohibited. The rules keep on changing, but the final concept, the basic is same. Now coming to your question. That if humanity was evolved, then Adam and Eve, they would have been handicapped. So that's what I'm telling you. It is not 100% that if a brother and sister marry, they should be handicapped. It's not at all 100%. Chances are more, maybe 1%, maybe 2%. It's not 100% at all. For example, if you have extramarital sex, not that you will get AIDS. It's not a must you will get STD. Chances are there. Whatever, it's not a must. For example, if you jump from the first floor. If you jump from first floor, there's chances you'll die. Chances. Yes. What? Maybe 1%, maybe 2%. If you jump from 100 floor, chances may be 99. Correct? I agree. So just because if I tell you if you jump from first floor, you may die, that doesn't mean you have to die. The chances may be half percent, 0.1 percent. First floor is not very high. So similarly, there are chances. doesn't mean that the person will have genetic problems. So this is what, when you pose a question, you should know the percentage. The percentage is very small. And furthermore, that proves that previously it wasn't the case. So what we realize that this is not a must. It's not a must. But previously in the olden days, yes, brothers and sisters also got married. But that time nothing happened. It's not a very high chances. And doctors, is it possible? Any doctor will say it's possible. If brother, sister got married and did not have genetic problem, very much possible. No one can debate. Chances are there, but it didn't happen. So that's how humanity was evolved. And the ruling about the consecutive marriage I already told you earlier. Do you have any other question? Yeah, another one actually. Sure, most welcome. Now, now this is with regards to the practice of sunnat. I am told that it is uh, actually emulating the practices done by Prophet Muhammad. And uh, if we're only supposed to bow down to the formless God, why do we follow practices which are done by a human incarnation, particularly things like growing your hair to a certain length, which may not have a particular significance in terms of benefit, or kissing the Hazrat Aswad when someone also declined that you're just a stone after Prophet Muhammad didn't kiss you, I wouldn't do this either. Brother, that's a very good question. That's a very good question that when we agree Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is not Almighty God, why do you have to emulate him? Why do you have to copy him if he's the incarnation of He's not incarnation of God. So in your sentence... A human incarnation, a human form. He's a human being. He is the best human being, but he's not God. Why do we follow? Because Almighty God has said that. Quran says in Surah Nisa chapter 4, 59, Atiullah, ob Rasul. Obey Allah and obey the messenger. God has said, God said, follow the prophet, we follow. For example, I'm the boss of a company. I tell, follow my general manager. Now, you will say, why follow general manager, boss? Boss is saying so. If boss says, you have to follow. Unless the general manager goes against me, and if the trusted general manager he'll never go against me. So similarly, the prophet will never go against the teachings of Almighty God. It is because he is the messenger who has got the message of God for us. 
so when you emulate him it gives us no blessings but we can't worship him we love the prophet we revere him we love him we obey him but we don't worship him so people who go to dargah khwaja muhyiddin chiste and all this this is wrong it's no way mentioned in the quran to go to dargah there's no hadith saying go to dargah and the second part the significance of hazrat aswad I just for the gain because the prophet kissed it I'm emulating it doesn't become the fard it's not compulsory I have to do it sunnat means you will get blessing but in sunnat if you don't do there's no negative point in fard you have to do it if you don't do it negative points like pray five times you have to do don't do negative points sunnat means if you do plus points if you don't do no negative points so these are additional bonus points so if you want bonus you can do it not compulsory If you don't do also, no one can say that you're not a good Muslim. So when you do it, you get additional bonus point. And a good Muslim tries to get more bonus point, but no one can say it's a sin. Therefore, it becomes the sunnah. So Prophet kissed it. We are kissing it. Even if you don't kiss it, yet there's no problem. Hope that answers the question. Sir, yeah. Thanks very much. You're welcome.